So welcome to worship in Bordado United Methodist Church this morning, where we're blessed to have the visitors from St. Andrews join us for worship and communion. As we look for ways to work together to make disciples for the transformation of the world right here in Central New York. Announcements. I would remind you that there will be another combined service on August 25th in St. Andrews at 10 o'clock. Mark your calendars. I'm planning to have some kind of um, revival type service there on that Sunday. So I'm not sure exactly what that looks like yet, but I think it will be an enjoyable experience for all who are in attendance. You'll find our worship schedule for both churches on pages 9 and 10 of your bulletin. Please notice that we will return to our normal worship schedule next Sunday. Are there other announcements we need to share this morning? Yes, Jim. No coffee hour today because we're asking you to um, go over and have pancakes with the support that we're down in fire department. So no coffee hour today. I talked to the folks in Bordina in the fire department, and they said that the crowd starts to thin out about 11, which will be about the time <coughs> that we should be arriving there a little later. So, and Mark and I have homemade maple syrup for those who are interested in homemade maple syrup. I'm oh my goodness. Oh. I think I've died. <laughs> <laughs> are there other announcements we need to share this morning? Would you join me for the verse? for the day, which is taken from John chapter 6, verse 20. But he, that is Jesus, said to them, It is I, do not be afraid.
in your bulletin or on page 833. <laughs> we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come into Jesus, the Word made the flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and in others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, and in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, lead us here. Find our spirits, holy men, and our hearts be set to your word for us this day. With our songs and prayers, our witness and reflection, may we be faithfully know what you call us to be. In the name of our brother Christ, we pray. Amen. Who eat up my people as they eat bread and 
Ye must call upon the Lord. There shall be a great terror. For how is the generation of the righteous? You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. All that deliverance for Israel will come from Zion. When the Lord restores his fortunes, Jacob will rejoice. Israel shall be glad. Dear Lord, let the words from your Holy Scripture fall upon our hearts and upon us, so that we may feel your presence and grace here among us. Today's Old Testament reading comes from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 15. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, while she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and did not go down to his house. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him, so that he may be struck down and die. And today's epistle comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow on my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power of work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Now, today's Gospel reading comes from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. 
When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to eat a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five, five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the word of God for the people of God. It is God's abundant grace that brings us back 
reconciliation with you. When we wander away or fall prey to our sinful human nature. In our Old Testament lesson this morning, it seems that King David has fallen prey to these temptations. Those temptations that come with power and authority and sometimes come to those who have achieved lofty places in their lives. So David was okay as he decided to go up on his roof and spend some time in there to relax in the cool evening breeze. But he gave in to temptation when he decided to have Bathsheba, the woman he saw on an adjacent rooftop, brought to the palace because her beauty had intrigued him. Now maybe if the prophet Nathan had known what was going on, he might have reminded David that what he was doing was wrong. But that's not the way our story goes. Bathsheba conceives. The child is certainly David's. And David sends for Uriah, who is off fighting Israel's battle in Nabal. His plan is to convince Uriah to go and sleep with his wife. That's what it means when he said, wash your feet. So that she could claim that the pregnancy was Uriah's child. But Uriah is a committed soldier who refuses to leave his fellow soldiers and spend time at home with his wife. So David has to hatch another, even more devious plan to have Uriah killed in battle. All of this is David's. He bears the full responsibility for everything that happens in this story. He has taken actions that he conceived as being well-placed without regard for the others involved. He's relied on his own power and authority, and that reliance would eventually cost him and Bathsheba, the unborn child's life. In our Gospel reading this morning, the crowds that gathered around Jesus and his disciples are also the recipients of God's love and grace through Jesus. Jesus feeds the 5,000 uninvited guests on that remote mountaintop with five loaves of barley bread and two fish. Now John doesn't tell us why Jesus and the disciples crossed the sea of Galilee. But he does tell us a large crowd followed him up the mountain, probably looking for more of those miracles that Jesus had performed when he cured the sick among them. Jesus wasn't obligated to take care of the crowd, but it's out of grace that he decides to feed them in this remote place. Of course, he didn't take time to plan or set up a banquet, and he makes no effort to raise any money to buy the food that will feed these folks. In fact, Philip says it would take six months of wages, about 200 denarii, to buy the provisions needed to feed a large crowd. Peter's brother, Andrew, knows that there is a boy with five barley loaves and two fish. But he says that it's hardly enough to feed this crowd. Yet Jesus' actions with the loaves and the fish reflect the actions of the host at a Jewish meal. Jesus is the host who welcomes and invites the community to share in God's hospitality. He has the people sit down in a large patch of grass. He gives thanks for the food. And the Greek word for thanks 
for giving thanks is the word Eucharist, or thanksgiving, the word we use for the Lord's Supper. And all are fed. All are fed, and 12 basketfuls of leftovers are gathered so that they won't be, won't be wasted. And later in this reading, it is the disciples who are in need of God's grace and presence. They've gone out into the Sea of Galilee in a boat, and they're battling a, star, a storm at sea in the middle of the night. When Jesus approaches the boat walking on the water, he says to them, It is up. Do not be afraid. By walking on the water and reassuring the disciples that it is Jesus, he shows them once again that he cares for them, just as he showed the crowds whom he fed on the mountain that he cared for them as well. The abundance of God's grace is displayed in both of these scriptures. God's grace can be either the forgiveness we need when we slip away from God and we think we can control a bad situation by ourselves, or it can be included when we are for us, when we are in a difficult situation that requires us to trust the power of miracles to direct our lives. God has always gone to profound lengths to use those things that are broken, to restore our connections with Him and each other, and to reconcile His people who may have lost their way in life. So when we're in trouble, it's Jesus who comes to us and says, it is I. Do not be afraid. All we have to do is welcome you into the boat. As we bless our communion elements this morning, we ask God to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. Our prayer is not to change the elements into the body and blood of Jesus. Our prayer is to change us so that we are ready and willing to accept Christ's grace and presence in our lives, which will enable us to be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. With these words, we receive grace and reconnect as members of God's community, a, God, a community that takes its name from God's Son, Jesus Christ. God's grace is abundant and available for you and for I and for others, even though they may have fallen away from God's plan for their lives. All we have to do is take the time to recognize that it's there and take advantage of what God has offered to us. Amen. Amen. Okay, would you then join me in our unison prayer this morning? Holy One, we come before you with the contrite hearts. You know what we want and not done that. You know who we betrayed and excluded, yet you love us still. We do not mean to hurt or cause harm, yet we easily cover up our wrongs. We bow before you in hope and trust. Amen. Would you continue with me in an attitude of prayer this morning? One body, one spirit. One hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Take uh, this patchwork collection of persons and quilt us together as your church. 
like old pieces of cloth. Take our words and our songs and our prayers, our thoughts and our inner corners, and join them all together into a new and living fabric, the purpose of which is to cover and color your world, or at least our cover up, corner up, with your grace. Amen. We ask for an extra portion of your grace and love for those we have included in our prayer list this morning. Prayers of thanks for the miracle of healing for St. Patrick and Yukonitska. Prayers for healing for those who continue to struggle with illnesses and disabilities. Prayers of comfort for those who mourn the loss of friends and family or other loved ones this morning. And prayers of grace for those who may have lost their way. The special prayers of courage for those who are fighting for their home and their lives as they face natural disasters. <coughs> Let's pause now for a few moments of silent prayer as we bring our personal petitions directly to our loving God's ears. Gracious and loving God, all that we have has come from you. Help us to remember that you are always with us, even when it seems like we are far away from you and your kingdom of love. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 376 in your hymnal, O oh, Jesus, I have promised.
Go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Sending forth is number 668 in your hymnal, Let Us Now Depart in Thy Peace. 